what are total dissolved solids? What are they doing in my aquarium? Should I care about it? And do I need a TDS meter? All those questions and more answered right now. If you're new here, welcome to the fish cave. If you end up learning something from today's video, please hit that like button and consider subscribing. All right, so what are total dissolved solids? Pretty much in all of our water, this tap water included, there's dissolved solids, unless you have an RO system, and I'll get to that in a second. So whether you're on a tap water or a well water, wherever you get your water from, like I said, unless it's an RO system, there's gonna be some level of total dissolved solids or TDS in that water. And essentially, that could be anything. It could be fish poop, AKA nitrates, any of the hard minerals that are typically in our water, even something like water conditioner that you put in the water to make it safe for fish will add to the TDS because it's adding chemicals to that water. It's adding something to that water. You may have heard before that specific fish or shrimp need low levels or high levels of TDS. A lot of times we hear about like the, the Amazon river species and how low the TDS is there, usually somewhere under 10 TDS. Whereas my tap water, which is fairly hard, comes in at about 120 TDS. And if you look online, you'll find different TDS ranges for different species. And when I bought fish and shrimp before from other hobbyists, they've actually provided that information to me. They've told me the TDS. So now that we know that TDS is pretty much anything in our water, we need to figure out how that can help us and why we need to measure it. And I'll get to the whole TDS meter and how easy it is to measure it and how actually cheap it is and where to get one in a second. But essentially, I use TDS and my TDS meter to give me a basic level of my TDS in my tanks. And then it's a quick way for me to test if anything's wrong. And I won't know exactly what's wrong, but I'll know I need to do some further investigation. So I use it as a tool in addition to my master API kit. I definitely recommend you keep a master API kit or use test strips however you normally test your water because that'll give you a better idea once you maybe identify something is out of whack with the TDS. But what you want to do is you want to get a baseline of your TDS out of your tap or out of your well. You want to get a baseline of TDS in your tanks overall in your tanker tanks and then you can monitor it. It takes a second, I'll show you guys in a second. You can monitor it daily, weekly. It's a lot easier than using a master test kit. And I'll be honest, I don't use these test kits that frequently at all. I pop around now that I have a TDS meter, I could pop into a tank and I know that most of my tanks over here, pretty much all my tanks run at around 150 to 180 TDS. And like I said, the tap water here is about 110, 120. And for my fish, the 150 to 180 range is fine. In the future, I may be keeping some species that require a more precise TDS, you know, under 10 or at least under 20. So I'll definitely be using this to help me in that regard. But for right now, my main reason to use it is to keep a baseline. The unit itself is super easy to use. I got this one on Amazon. I'm gonna put my Amazon affiliate link down below. If you click through that link, it does support the channel. We get a small percentage. This unit was, I think, $13.99 on Amazon. And like I said, it works in seconds. It comes with a battery, the back end, if you wanna change the battery, it's one of those you know small batteries. Um, and then on the front end is covered, there's two prongs in here. And essentially, there's three buttons. You simply turn it on. It comes automatically calibrated, it comes on, it's designed for drinking water. So it reads red at 100 ppm. So essentially most tanks, if you're over 100, it's gonna say red, but we're not using it for drinking water. Although, hey, listen, if you're into that too, pick up a second one to measure your drinking water. Don't recommend using the same one on your tanks and to test for, uh, for drinking purposes. Once you got it zeroed out here, you just stick it in the water and you'll see it climb. And in this case, we're at 138. So literally within that second, I got the reading, I take it out, it already locks in. So it's already 138 and I could switch through the modes and it will tell me how many degrees Celsius that water was, 29 degrees Celsius, or it's actually 84 degrees Fahrenheit. It's pretty hot in here, guys. It's actually right about what my tanks run. My tanks run about 80, 81 degrees without any heaters here in the summertime. And once you're ready to go to the next tank, hit the clear button and then it zeroes out and it's green again and you're ready to go, you know, test again. So it's really simple and easy to use. Like I said, it's much easier than breaking out your test kit or your strips. It's fairly cheap too at about $13. I don't think everyone needs it, but like I said, it's a convenience factor to me to be able to test all my tanks and get a quick idea. If one of my tanks is all of a sudden reading, you know, 500, 600, and I didn't just drop some fertilizer in, I just didn't do something, and I'm just doing a routine check, I know that I have to break out my test kit and dig a little further. Um, if you're breeding and you gotta get some specialized, you know, uh, PPM or low water fish, this is so much, you, you definitely need one of these. Speaking of breeding guys, if you've been following my uh, dwarf 
Neon Rainbow Fish Egg Hatching Project. That video updates coming out Sunday. And uh, here's some fry right here. I've been using these in all the fry tanks in order to help me test the TDS really quickly. Instead of bringing around a master API test to all the tanks, I can literally just pop this in here. And here we go, 145. It's already locked in, so I can come here and then I can choose between the modes and find the, uh, the temperature, 27 Celsius, 82 Fahrenheit. Um, I can go back to the PPM, clear it, and you know, like I said, it's ready to go and pop it to the next tank. So it's really helped me you know, save time, save money, you don't have to keep buying chemicals, and save some fish too. Some of you guys out there may be a little already advanced or you may be curious how the TDS could affect the pH, which generally speaking, you know, a low TDS is a low pH, but not always. And that pretty much depends on what is actually lowering the pH, whereas CO2 could lower your pH, but that will not affect TDS because it's not a dissolved solid. If you want to get into some more in-depth stuff about pH and TDS and even KH and JH, I'll link a little table down below on how they're all related. If you're worried about your well water changing parameters during seasons, this is great to be able to test your well water to make sure that you know when you put it into your tanks, it's not different. Or if you're worried about your city, you know, adding different things to your water, this is a great way just to test the water just to make sure nothing's out of whack before you do your water changes. Now I want to make it clear that when I go through and I test all these tanks and they all read 150 TDS, it doesn't mean they're all the same parameters. They just mean that they're all stable. So essentially this thing is just a baseline so I know that okay these tanks are always reading 150 or 180 whatever that is if that changes but if I don't it by no means means that just because this one's 150 and this one 150 that they're the exact same parameters this one could have a lot of nitrates and this one could have a lot of fertilizers that has fertilized it another great reason to own a TDS meter is if you have a sick fish and you reach out to someone whether it's at your local fish store or especially online and you're saying oh my gosh I have this this and this wrong it looks like this you know, a good place to start is, hey, what's that TDS? Is it TDS raised? Maybe, you know, we can look into that further. It's definitely not a tool that everyone needs, but I'm happy I picked one up with the tanks I have for 13 bucks. I couldn't go wrong. Let me know down below if you've ever used a TDS meter before. Do you think it's beneficial? Do you think it's not worth it? I'm curious as to your thoughts. Like I said, I've had mine now for a little bit and I think it's worth every bang for the buck. The biggest thing to always remember with TDS and a TDS meter is it tells us the big picture and the total dissolved solids. It doesn't get into specifics, so we always need to do some further research. I hope you guys picked something up in today's video. If you're looking to learn about some sponge filter media, you can check out that video. Um, I have another video over here about some of the clamps I use. Once again, thank you guys so much for checking out my videos. I appreciate it. As always, stay positive and stay passionate.